Vulcan Deck Masters, week one, day three, with me, uh, a picture of Wombat. How are you doing, man? I am doing handsome, and you are as well. I can see a lustrous beard. I heard, uh, depressingly, I forget if it was uh, uh, last week or I was watching your stream or something like that, that your wife is not a fan of the beard. Man, I was, I was sad. I was instantly sad for you, and I thought, what in the world is it coming to? We've got a lot of handsome beards playing today. Yeah, I think uh, it's all about uh, not getting lazy, right? Like, I just have to, to maintain it more. Maybe Keep then I'll can, I can sell yeah. it. Yeah. Um, by the way, your name and mine are inversed. So I'm for now, I'm Wombat, and you are that Noxious. Is, so I, we'll figure that oh, out they after. I switched it before I could say how, how pleased I was to get that. I was going to be like, I do have 400 million subscribers on YouTube. I do. Oh, yeah. 400 million. That's exactly yeah. it. That's what uh, it's up to. So um, we're going to be like moving into the games very shortly. We have five matches today, same format as the two first days of the week. This is going to be the last day of the week, obviously. It's on Friday. Uh, we'll be casting Gaara versus Harudra today. We'll have Strive Crow versus Brian, Brian Kibler, Kibler from Brian Kibler Gaming, which is a pretty impressive title to hold. Trump versus Orange, Kufdon versus Stilo, two players that I personally do not know. We saw Kufdon play versus Colento on day one, and uh, I mean, he did lose pretty convincingly which is a bit unfortunate for his first appearance and show versus ivan we were supposed to cast ties of time but there's been a little bit of a problem you know getting uh, getting a hold of him so we're still waiting on official feedback on that end but show versus ivan is going to happen today as a fifth match of the day yeah uh and uh i think uh, i was uh one of our production staff said life coach was going to be coming in uh for tides of time the big german Gonna All come right, in and, uh, and put some hurt on people. Possibly, uh, I don't think uh, we'll find out. I mean, I'm assuming that's uh, that's what the schedule says. We'll see about it on Monday, uh, which will be when that, whenever, when the next game would have come around. Yeah, that's when that's when we'll see uh, what the replacement for Tides is. So, for the first match, we know that Gara's got. Uh, oh yeah, we get confirmation. In fact, that it has been replaced with uh, Tides has been replaced with Life Coach. So you're right on that front. The the classes that Gara brings this time around are a bit more in line. Like I don't know if you looked at the matchup, but it's gonna be pretty cool to watch him play Shaman because last week he didn't bring it, and I really was hoping that he would, just considering Gara just basically always brings Shaman, no matter what lineup he's got, it's always in there. Um, he took Shaman Warrior Hunter this week, and I really can't wait to see if he's gonna bring something a bit different Shaman wise. Yeah, I I, I had to say uh, over the course of a uh, dream hack in the past couple of weeks, I, I've seen Shaman not as much, and uh, it's it's gonna be exciting to see what he what he rolls out here. Um, I know that uh, it's it's really been a lot of a lot of patron Malagos, the Warlock, and and the Mage have been getting a lot of love lately, and the Warriors. Yeah. So uh, it's good to see it's good to see mix em ups. You know what I mean? Yeah, Gaara's playing his warrior though, so like his hunter got banned and he's going to be playing his patient warrior here in the first game versus Harudra's hunter. Harudra has a warlock on the back end, his warrior was banned by Gara, who doesn't want to face off against patron, knowing how crazy the, you know, any matchup against patron can get. Alright, well, that's a pretty solid opener. He picked up King Crush from that web spinner. <laughs> oh man, did the game ever, does the game ever get that long against the... Uh... Oh, no, right uh, <laughs> especially not uh, not with Patron coming out on the next draw as well. I mean, he's going to be able to fill up that board quick, uh, so I, it's going to be rough to try and get that one out. Uh, and uh, going to get uh, Huffer, Huffer, Huffer. Huff. Yeah, just another day in, the, in Hearthstone. Well, Gar's hand is pretty solid. Oh, he's picked up the Frothing, the Warsong Commander, and the Grim Patron. All he needs now is to find is to find it. You know, AoE enablers to get those going because, you know, as good as they are standalone, they don't do much. And the curve from Harudra is looking quite good at the moment. Yeah, gonna get his piloted shredder out onto the field and uh, flip it back over to Gar, who draws an execute out, throws his fiery war axe down, and uh, he's gonna go ahead and get it. Let's see what it drops. <laughs> oh. oh man, Harudra, this is not what you want. No, sir. This it's is gonna, not what you want. RB Cal could solve this problem though, enough. right? Could do. Uh, he's going to get his freezing trap out, which, you know, worst case, will buy him a little bit of time. And uh, that uh, shield, bleh. my brain doesn't work. Mm. The Armorsmith. Armorsmith, there you go. Right, yeah. <laughs> I wanted the to say Armorsmith. shield maiden, and I was like, that's not, that's not right. It's, uh, I've been up a lot of hours. I'm on a weird sleep schedule right now, so. Uh, that's fine. I'll, uh. I'll correct you if need be. Like yeah. uh, Armorsmith is one of the most important cards to find early against a hunter, but Harudra's early game has been handled by Gara quite well. I mean, that unstable ghoul, not a card you've seen every patron, really did pay off in this case. Another patron is picked up. 
That's going to be a big threat if uh, Gar decides to play it now just as a fodder, right? Just to scare his opponent. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a lot of trouble. You see him, you know, just uh, ping in the face there last time around. He's got uh, plenty of options here going forward. I mean, Gar is sitting in a pretty nice little spot. Kill command over on Harudra's side. We'll see if it'll uh, allow him to get a little bit of work done. He's going to pop that freezing trap and uh, buy a little bit of time. Get that armor smith put back. Rudra has to kill that Grim Patron. I mean, come on. You can't let that live. Well, okay, maybe now you can. You picked up freezing. You just can't let the warrior get an AoE and a Warsong Commander on the board after Patron. You're just going to lose the game on the back of that if you do. Yeah, and since the second Grim Patron's in the deck, he's not entirely out of the woods yet. Going to go ahead and uh, ping the face. One more time there, and uh, Whirlwind going to come out for Gara. Oh man, he does pick up the Whirlwind. He could opt for a Grim Patron Whirlwind play, but he's vulnerable to two pieces of removal. You know, an Eagle Horn Bow on the 3 3 would be a bit of a problem um, if there's a kill command to follow up to kill the other patron. But then again, that's a gamble Gar might be willing to take if he goes for the patron Whirlwind right now, or is he going to wait for later? It's really all about whether or not he wants to gamble the ability for the patron to really live and uh, multiply fruitfully. <laughs> Yeah, and certainly at the moment, it, it'd be a it'd be a kind of hefty risk to throw that down on the field because Harudra doesn't have anything out that's particularly scary. So if he wants to bide his time, wait and see if he can get something out on the board that'll let him make sure that that patron's going to have maximum impact. You know, he's he's got time to play around with it. Yeah, it's funny how Harudra hasn't found the high main. It's probably one of the most important cards you want here. Like even Sludge Belcher is not going to be as good for you here if you're uh, if you're playing mid range hunter and you find it because the slime tends to allow the patrons to do what they want. And you know Gara just setting up here two patrons casually, and it's a bit of an issue. It's a bit of an issue for Harudra if he can't handle those because they will start replicating. And Web Spinner at the moment, I mean, it could buy him a little bit of help. We'll wait and see. He's going to buff it up, give it taunt, uh, and then just go to face again and uh, flip it back over again. It's, uh, I mean, it's given Gara some time here. He's got an Acolyte of Pain now, which will let him uh, go a little deep into the deck. Uh, but uh, at the moment, yeah, like you said, Harudra doesn't have a whole lot. Uh, you know, he needs to find something you know, that's going to give him some... I, expected, uh, uh, I, expected her, I have expected Harudra to play Freezing Trap, but he probably had a suspicion that Gaara had a Warzone Commander, which means you're basically just returning one patron and basically giving your opponent another wave of them in the future. So, Gaara here is just going to start punching for damage, most likely. Trade one yeah. patron away and then just go in face. If there was an answer for the patron, he would have seen already. Yeah, sent with uh, 10 on board. Well, going to drop that down a little bit there as he clears the board away. But uh, still going to be sitting with plenty of damage on board for Gara. Going to grab a Haunted Creeper, which is, I mean, just not really what you want to see with that kind of damage out on the board. He's got the Freezing Trap and the Kill Command still in hand. Oh, it's He's not got that the owl, bad. He found the Owl. Yeah. He yeah. can silence his Ancient Washer. He can uh, Kill Command one of the minions on the board and then he'll play Freezing Trap. I mean, silencing the Washer allows him to play the Washer for value, which is it sounds ridiculous now that I think about it, but yeah. um, <laughs> play, playing yeah, the Ancient Washer for value is, attack, yeah. it just makes sense. You could kill sorry, either the Grim Patron yeah, pull or the Warsong Commander, yeah. or kill command the and then kill command the um, frothing berserker because you can't let the berserker just stack damage. I think that is a bigger threat to you than either of the other two. Yeah, especially when you can wipe the the grim patron out all at once. There, uh, again, still got freezing trap as well. So he's certainly got he's got a little bit of time, but looks like he can't quite decide what he's going to do. He's going to go for the silence. Does he see the play? He gonna... does. All right, that's good. Let's feel like I'm playing a handlock. Something you see very often. He decides to trade it out for the patron. And kill command, gonna get uh, plopped over. All right, and the, this frothing will. I, you know what? I actually like this better than what I mentioned. I said kill command, the frothing berserker, but truth is, the odds of Gara popping out another charging minion are fairly slim. So as a result, um, letting the frothing berserker return to the hand is probably a better idea. But Gara's got answers here with the execute and cruel taskmaster to kill everything on the board. Yeah, not a lot of health uh, left sitting on that after the trades there. And yeah, with the 8-4 with the freezing trap, not going to be too much of a threat. Gar taking his time, do the math. He's going to drop Acolyte of Pain, it looks like. And just uh, hope he can get some good draws off of that. And Cruel Taskmaster out so he can trade it over. You know, next turn is Crush turn. The thing is, King Crush is a bit too late. It's one of those things where, I mean, it's impressive to look at when you get it from Web Spinner. But in a realistic sense, it never does anything. I mean, Gara's seen two kill commands already. He's not afraid of anything. One's gone on the Warsong Commander, the other one to the uh, earlier Grim Patron. 
And even if there's a King Crush here by Harudra, he knows that it's only waiting to get traded into by the 9-4. At the very worst, that's what happens. So, Yeah, and right now, no convincing way to get that 9-4 off the board Berserker. Uh, you know, yeah, you can't really throw Crush into this. You got to hope he pops that Freezing Trap, sends it back into the hand, which, you know, gives Gara time to build up more of a board. Hey, he uh, could Harudra's play Crush the about. same way. He could actually attack with, uh, with Crush into the 2-2 or the 3-2 and trade the owl for the other one, giving him... Like, he's got the King Crush on the board, and then the Frothing returns. I mean, if Gaur had a charge man, he would have played it. Absolutely but you must be true. afraid of removal, I guess, yeah. because if you play that, then King Crush you might get ex the second execute. Not a lot sitting in the hand of, uh, of Gaur to respond. As, uh, he's got an Armor Smith and Acolyte of Pain. Good for draws in. He's going to be King Crush. King Crush with whom? <laughs> sure. Oh man, just a full great face, face there. So you you know what? I actually I disagree with this play. I think this is the losing play by a long shot because now you're guaranteed never to be able to. Well, then again, I think it. But doesn't he play high mains? I mean, top decking a high main would be a great play. Oh, and now he knows he's going to be taking a lot of damage because that freezing trap is not going to pop on the frothing. It's going to pop with the armor with the froth the uh, cruel task, and then that can be reused for extra damage. I mean, I don't. That seems like a very big all in play. Yeah, I mean, and, and you can see Gara kind of taken aback by it there for a second. He's going to possibly, is he going to pop that owl? Just thinking about it. But, I mean, that <laughs> Berserker's getting big. He's got, uh, he's got an unstable ghoul down in the hand as well, which will buy him a little bit of time against that King Crush. I, I mean, it's a, it's a rough spot to be in if you're Harudra. Yeah, like, Gara wants to find four more damage. Theoretically, there's a chance that he just picks it up. Now this Frothing's Worker gonna go up to attack and give some armor to uh, to Gara. But now Gara's gotta be worried about a second owl, so he's gonna have to make the trade, I'm afraid. Second owl and unstable ghoul uh, would kill you, so I think you have to trade into Crush here. Against your possible best judgment. Does he do it? No! No, he goes he all goes in. goes face instead. <laughs> if the, owl, the second owl gets picked up by Harudra or Unleash the Hounds, that could be it, and that is not it. No, grabs Abusive Sergeant instead, and Harudra just going to lean back on that one and uh, start looking for a way out of it. You know what? Like, I, I actually uh, I mentioned the fact that I thought the King Crush play was a bit too all-in, but maybe it would have been the better play. I just get a feeling that you get punished too often for doing so, considering what's already on the board, um, to, actually, to afford it. But Harudra thought otherwise. He's seen two patrons, so really no threats were coming from Gara. I feel like the Hunter could have taken a bit more time to maybe get a high main. Yeah, possibly. I, I mean, obviously, uh, with Gara choosing to go straight to face there, like it, it might not have been something Haruja was thinking he was doing. He's going to say, okay, he's going to go straight into Crush, not knowing that a taunt ended up in the deck. And uh, Gara decided to uh, play the odds there. And I don't think he's got a way to put three damage down on that ghoul. I mean, other no. than the trade, obviously. Yeah, there's no way. With Crush. He's trying to calculate whether or not he can get enough perfect juggles to, for and things to line up, but he can at best get two juggles. Uh, imagine if the two juggles actually hit. I mean, the three juggles, if there were three, actually hit the unstable ghoul, and then he could pull <laughs> off some crazy hit to the That would be, I mean, that's the sort of stuff that you love the RNG cards for, though. I mean, I gotta say, I, I've seen a lot of people playing Unstable Portal. I love anything that gives you the chance, you know, arcane missiles, anything that's gonna let you pull out those ridiculous, definitely shouldn't have happened kind of wins. Yeah. Uh, sadly, Harudra uh, being handsome is not enough, and uh, he's gonna go down. Uh, one game to nothing here to Gara, but he still can replay in a conquest format. You know, Gara's patron warrior is out, and now Gara's left with shaman. Now a lot of pros say that shaman is one of the worst classes, if not the worst. There's been articles written about this recently, and Hurudra has a hunter, which is especially good against it um, if you play it properly, and a warlock, which is also not too bad depending on how it's built. I think going for hunter first is a really good option here for Harudra because. The strength of the matchup makes it so you're likely to equalize a series and possibly follow up and win it. Yeah, both of these players sitting at 1-0 currently in the overall standings. Uh, so going to be the first match loss for one of them. Um, obviously, Harudra coming in uh, a little bit less well-known. I watched a little bit of his podcast uh, earlier today, and uh, certainly he's active in the scene, behind the scenes. Uh, obviously, Gara going to be the more well-known name, but Harudra you know, coming out with a win of his own. Earlier on in the week, so uh, definitely a force to be looking uh, looking out for here. Uh, Gara got him that first game. We'll see what he can do here to answer as Gara thinks over his redraws. 
So, I mean, in Ruby and Egg and Shaman, I wouldn't say that's unplayed. It's like it's not unheard of. In fact, it was a staple of Shaman for quite a long time after Nax Dramas came out. But I can't say I've seen too many of this. Like, nowadays, I'm expecting more of a mech Shaman approach very often. <coughs> hmm. Gonna hold on to it. There's his high main. A little late. That's a good pickup. So he does play high mains after all. We have confirmation post game that he did play it's high mains. It uh, <laughs> gets it in game two. That's that one where you kind of shake your head. You're like, where were you? Where were yeah. you? You just sold me out last game. Don't you remember that game you played on ladder, of course, where you needed that Dr. Boom or that Ragnaros, and the next game they're both in your starting hand, and you just wonder, <laughs> what have I done? Was it the art? The numbers got me. The rolls got me. So both eggs going to be into uh, Gara's hand there. He's going to drop some taunted friends out onto the board for Harudra to deal with. His little creeper looking lonely, but just going to trade across into that uh, with the weapon. How often does Gara just earth shock this? I, well, never mind. Answer <laughs> that answered my question really quick. I was well, going to ask, uh, because my fear, I think my thinking is that he's afraid of a Houndmaster, but he, generally speaking, you can attack into the Creeper and deny the Houndmaster anyway. The drawback is that you're not um, getting any initiative from that play. You're basically surrendering it, especially when the Hunter has got a bow charge left on the back end. Yep, oh, wow, double egg. Shredder, and uh, there goes Earth Shock for do you Gara. double egg and into Defender, or do you play Pilot Shredder, like the Counter Shredder? You're weak uh, yeah. to Iron BKL if you counter shred, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good It's good value for money with the Devinder and the eggs, though. Uh, for money. Uh, yeah. That's a bad... That's a bad for the, for the, if, if you spin, <laughs> mana, if you spin mana, it kind of sounds like money. You know, yeah. It's very good mana. You know, you can, you can make it spin and sound I like it. I don't know. It was just... Mana, I, you know? like, there's an I end, there's tiny, an end. I had a tiny stroke <laughs> real quick. I got over it, though. I'm, I'm feeling better. It's going to be Shredder versus Shredder. That's uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He is hoping I for care. that Iron BKL, but doesn't pick it up. So I think Hirudra is going to start punching face severely here. Might play the trap to mind game his opponent. I wouldn't fault him for that. Um, either way, Garo is going to have to play into it. Explosive trap going to go down, and he is going to go to face for five. I back. think uh, Gara's got a good play here. If if he figures out it's explosive and decides to attack the Leoc, which he will undoubtedly try. I mean, either way, you have a chance to either get returned no matter what you do, or alternatively, you get a kill on Leoc if it's um, explosive. I don't think he's going to play around Snake. And if he does kill Leoc, then he can then follow up with just about anything he wants. Manatai, Nerubian forces an immediate answer on those. Um, a little weak to unleash, but very often I think he'll get. he's going to be in a good spot. And Snake Trap has seen a bit of a resurgence lately, so it's one of those things that, you know, you can't necessarily write off the board as there have been more than a couple people playing it. Oh man, uh, Gara going to play into the Explosive Trap magnificently. It's going to go right? egg all the way, making omelets this morning. But I think it's a bit vulnerable to unleash, is it not? Uh, could be. Uh, what's it's it no, just Oh god. Ends turn. All right, he's playing for the defense of Argus, not the Explosive Trap. Doesn't want to risk returning that 4-3 to his hand. Definitely not. He'd rather return a 1-2 unpopped egg in case it is freezing. But you know that Unleash, that's a lot of damage coming in. And Gara's got no healing in sight. He's got a taunt, but how much is that going to do? And the bow down. Going to give him plenty of time to put lots of hurt on. Yeah, he gets he a charge from that down. as well. Was that 13 and the bow for 15 down to 9. Yeah, definitely going to be a lot of pressure. Back foot in a big way. He a has cautious to play, and I mean, he won't even know it for a bit now. It cost him uh, quite a bit there. I mean, I think I think he's got to go all in on the lightning storm. Like, what else can you really afford to do? What else can you really uh, afford? Totem, to do? lightning storm. There you go. And if it pops the shredder, that's going to be an earth shock opportunity missed. But at least you could probably kill Leoc with it in the worst case scenario. All right, and now he's all in. He's going to try to kill that Leoc. I don't think he can let it live with the possibility of... Never mind. He disagrees, and Unleash the Hounds is going to steal <laughs> the game. <laughs> Wah, kill command out. Going to send it straight across. And this is what we were saying. You know, Hunter's having a great matchup against Shaman. And Gar bringing one of the considered weakest classes. I think the only player I've seen play this since, uh, for a few, you know, for a bit now, is the Hawkeye, which has been piloting it to great success. Uh, Tiddler Celestial also making a mention of that specific insistence that Hawkeye's had to play. Shaman. I don't know if Haruja's second deck will prevail because Shaman isn't even that bad against Warlock. I mean, no matter the archetype, um, Shaman is okay against it. I think it's one of the matchups you can expect to win fairly consistently. 
plenty of great warlock variety here over the past few weeks. And Harutra, I got to say, I mean, even it up 1-1. One, one, if you're Gara, I mean, is it is it sort of that comfort of being used to the best of five and this switch up to the best of three? Is is that why I, you're sort I of think, playing uh, the long game there? I wonder. Uh, I don't know, because like if you think about it, this is a conquest best of three with a ban. Yep. Usually in conquest, you don't have any bans, so it takes a bit of time to mind game your, you know, your picks. You have to make sure you pick the right classes and whatnot. In this case, they're basically locking three decks in, hoping that the opponent bans the one they want to see banned, and then they'll be count like countering obviously what the opponent plays. Um, it's a very different format. It's fairly unique. Absolutely, and I, I, that's what I'm wondering. I mean, did Gara did Garda run in run into his own feet there and kind of underplay that one a little bit, thinking, "Hey, best of five is what I'm used to." Maybe uh, I think he has a little bit longer of running. Obviously, we did see the uh, the miss pick earlier this week uh, when somebody picked a deck they didn't have. Uh, I want to say and gave up game. I want to say it was uh, was that Kalento? Was it? So mm, yeah, Kalento picked the wrong deck, and then well, yeah. he still ended up winning over Kufa. Yeah, no, <laughs> I guess, it ain't no problem. What was it? What is that? He punished right? hard on the on the other side of that miss pick. He was like, "Hey, it's no problem," and just that just keeps going. And Harudra with the slow play tapping. Is this a mid range warlock or whoa? The Sylvanas in this deck. We're gonna pull Sylvanas out. So maybe some big cards hiding deep in there somewhere. Harudra up now. Yeah, I, yeah. He's got to be afraid of Flame Tongue Totem. Like coining out that Flame Imp is, he feels is a suicidal move. And Gara falling asleep here on the stream. <laughs> not gonna <laughs> do. Like, <laughs> is, is playing Handlock really that hard? He doesn't know yet that it's not Zoo. He expected a one drop and a two drop, but nothing came out of it. So uh, Gara now expecting Handlock. He's gonna get a little bit of a surprise when it's not. The a little bit of a surprise. There. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be interesting to see how he can play around that Flame Imp. Looks like the drop now didn't coin it out last time around, and uh, that's what he spent his time thinking about. And did the creeper drop? Yes, he did. Well, what's interesting is Flame Imp is now worse than it was last turn, basically. Like, it, he didn't want to coin it out last turn, but now it's just like it's even weaker to Flame Tongue to him. Of course, in this case, um, it's a minor issue, but it could have been a really big deal. And Gara picking up, you know, a really good card to play on those two cards, probably one of the best. And he's going to start cleaning up that creeper. I really like Gara's uh, slow plays. Midrange Shaman feeling really strong in his hands. Boom, going to follow Sylvanas out and get all cuddly there. In the you deck. He can't play Doomguard here for a long time. So I think he's going to go for Defender into Coin Sylvanas and hope things work out. Because I mean, this is very, very difficult for Harudra. Like Not having the tempo as a zoo player is one of the weirdest experiences. Yeah, and certainly with the defender coming out from Gar, yeah, just basically forced the mirror answer there, and he's just gonna sit and stare at it for a minute, decide what he wants to do if he wants to trade anything across or let Gar handle that. I think the, the interesting swipe. part is Shaman has Lightning Storm where Harudra has nothing. You know, like when it comes to clearing boards in an evenly matched tempo war, Shaman will typically have the board wipe. Um, whereas the Zoo deck doesn't run Demon Wrath, doesn't run Hellfire, at least some versions do. Very few Zoo versions run Shadow Flame. But, you know, based on his current hand, Harudra, I'm thinking he's playing more of a mid range Warlock that happened to draw pretty poorly. He's just playing from behind at the moment, and he's trying to do the math on whether he wants to send some, uh, some love over there Gara's way. I don't think I would because those one ones will just straight into the imp and then into the spider. Well, never mind. I'm wrong. He doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're making it. Ever, they're making. They're making you. Uh, they're making you look bad with their with their shot calling here. It's led yeah. to some uh, some interesting situations. Absolutely. And there you go. Yeah. I mean, just value for money on the trade there for for Garas. He's going to be able to send one ones into it, clear away some taunts, and leave himself with a pretty nice looking board. Honestly, honestly. Harudra has to coin out Sylvana. If he doesn't, this game is over. It is the only way for him to catch this. And even then, look at the amount of damage. Gara's got 10. How much healing do you think Harudra's deck runs? I, you know, I kind of am feeling like not a whole lot. And even then, his draws have not really been going his way. So there's a decent odds he's not going to end up with any. Uh, by if you play Sylvana, it's kind pushing. of interesting. Because you play Sylvana, if he ends up killing your own, you re-steal whatever he took. So it's not even that bad of a counterplay. Like, it might sound a little weird, but... Oh man, if he finds a taunt totem... Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say Harujo's gonna be in a world of hurt. Gara just pushing damage, you know, he's like, I can get 10 in right now. Um, this shouldn't be that big of a deal. Even if he steals something, I can probably recover. 10 for 5 will be good cost. Defender of Argus, gonna be the draw here for Harudra. 
might save him a little bit of face time, but uh, you know he's uh, not got a lot of options as the board fills up. And like you said, not a lot of ways to clear out Gara's very, very nicely stacked board at this point. A lot of damage on board, and Harudra not looking down a ton of options. He's, he's, he's got the tulked up his juggler. This is one of the most amusing things. Um, Put this apple on your head. Wow, this is pretty... That is, uh, my, that's my favorite play now. Taunted Juggler. You know, Juggler used to be a 2-3. It was actually pretty crazy when you uh, you got it up through a taunt. It was really just an insane play. And the Lightning Storm that I mentioned a bit earlier. Um, the question Savannah's is, does he does he need it? Does he need it? Because if you calculate... I mean, I guess you, you give it a shot, right? What have you got to lose? Yeah, I mean, it couldn't hurt. It's, you know, it's three you costs. You told him up and, and then you storm yeah. and you see where that goes. And so he does. And he picks up the best one, so he's going to kill everything. Savannah steals an Arubian. It's not going green anymore, so he's only going to get only, quote-unquote, six damage to face. A healing Totem, actually healing an Arubian out of Defender Argus range, courtesy of Healing Totem. <laughs> a little annoying. He's going to be abusive sergeant, and uh, I don't think that's necessarily what Harudra would want to see here. Uh, he's got some trades across. It might buy him he another go-round, but uh, it's not going to buy him much more. Yeah, he's gonna have to hope that Doom Guard can do something good. He's gonna pop that shredder. Most likely and see what comes out of it. If it's a Nate Pagel, no. Oh what a bad trade. Basically two four threes. That is not what you want to see when you're popping a shredder. And yeah, Gara, absolutely. I think, doesn't even have lethal though. Fire Elemental plus Argus is only five. The so one off lethal. So Harudra still he's he's got to, he's gonna hope for the god draw. Uh he's just gonna kill that Doom Guard. With yep, the fire out there. Oh well, you know what? That was uh, that was an interesting match. The the, the zoo slash mid range warlock player not getting the tempo he needed against his opponents. Is he just gonna punch face like wreck? Why, why would I need to wipe? Looks this like board? yeah. <laughs> not respecting it's the doom guard one bit. Not even a little. I mean, thirty to six on the health counter. I mean, you know, if if Harudra just cold draws thirty damage straight out, then uh, good on him. He's gonna get a. An Iron Beak Owl. A you could live tap with your second flame in, um, but that's good game. Harutra losing the second one to Gara, taking the match actually, two to one over his opponent. Harutra's lineup was, I mean, his hunter was great against Shaman, but you know the Warlock is not exactly a match that's guaranteed to win you that. So in a conquest format where you've got to win with everything, that's a bit difficult. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he definitely didn't come into any of the sort of earlier draws that might have been a little bit helpful there. It would have been obviously nice to see the Owl a little bit earlier. But hey, I mean, that's Hearthstone. Uh, you, you can't game the, the RNG, but it can game you all day yeah. long. And that's why we play. So next match we're going to be having after the short break is going to be Strife Crow versus Kibler. So that should be an interesting match. Strife Crow on a complete roll. He's probably one of the top players in the world at the moment. Brian Kibler, a really uh, you know well-known player for his Magic the Gathering play. You've seen him in a few tournaments, I'm sure, in Hearthstone. Um, although I don't think he's got a, a big title to his name yet. I think he he won Challenge Stone with Kriparian, unless I'm mistaken. And in King Win Pro League, where I casted, he was also a part of the... I forget what his exact rank was, um, but he was also a part of the event. So he's been around... But but he hasn't yet a uh, first major event title to his name. We'll be right back after a short break, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned in.